Hello and welcome to this 3D Thursday. Today I'm going to be using Microsoft's 3D Builder. This is pre-installed on Windows 10 and I've opened it up and clicked on New Scene. What you've got here is a basic and simple 3D manipulation tool. So we can add things like basic shapes like this cube and then change and manipulate and weld other things to them. There are measurements showing here and I'm working in millimeters, but this can be changed to rotate the workspace, left click and drag, and you'll be able to move the uh, workspace around so you can see around your object. Alternatively, if you right click and drag, you will move from side to side or forwards and uh, sorry, up and down. That's just very basic, simple how to move around. I want to resize this object though, so I've clicked on the resize tool or the scale tool and I can type in now the exact measurements that I want this cube to be. I want it to be 20 millimeters, so I've done that. Now because my aspect ratio lock was on, I was able to um, resize the whole thing together just by typing in one measurement. This is the aspect ratio lock, you can turn it on or off. And it's also uh, going to help you when you're resizing specific things like this cylinder which is going to form the hole in the bead so i'm turning off this and i'm making sure that only one of the axes is selected and then i'm going to type in a measurement of two millimeters now what that's done is it squished it so if i rotate the workspace left click and drag you can see there that it's been squished if i now select the um, y-axis we can type in two there and we've now got a long thin cylinder two millimeters wide i'm using the handles to stretch that out though this time because i don't need the vertical to be uh, exact and i can use the x-ray option here as well on the view tab to see through that uh, to see through the shape and see that the hole is going to run all the way through the bead to punch that hole out of the bead, what I will need to do is use the subtract function which is found in the edit menu and all I do is select the shape that I want to punch out and then click subtract. That's now punched that hole right through my square cubed bead. With the x-ray tool on. <coughs> and deselecting any objects, I can see through and I can see there that there is that tube running right the way through the object. I'm selecting the object and I'm gonna save. Now you can save in all sorts of different formats from 3D Builder. I'm gonna give it a name first, square bead. And then I'm going to choose the 3MF format. That's the one that allows me to open it back up in 3D Builder. And then I'm going to choose STL. That's the one that will allow it to print from my printer. And I can also save it as an OBJ file if I wish to export it in a common format. Now what I'm going to do is very quickly put together a range of other beads. Uh, this time I'm working differently. I'm actually creating the center, the hole that I'm gonna punch out first. But each time I drop a new shape in, it will be in the central point. I'm using my drag tools to move them off to one side. So with each of these shapes that are, we can load into um, 3D Builder, we can actually create a bead. Now this is sped up because I wanted to show you just you can use other basic shapes. With this next one though, I will slow it down a bit more again and go back to normal speed because I wanted to show you uh, something else and that's the rotate function. Because my bead is not positioned where I can actually punch a hole through it because it's already got one, I'm using that rotate to rotate the object 90 degrees so that it's standing on its end and then I can move over and snap into place that rod, which is going to form the hole. And in the same way, I click subtract. And there I now have that donut bead, 
with a threading hole all the way through it. Now I've brought on too many of these rods, so I'm gonna take them off just by selecting and pressing the delete key. Using the settle function brings everything or brings what you've got selected onto the base of the workspace because as you saw it was sort of sinking through the bottom and just finally i rotated that donut shape around so you could see it better i'm using my move tool to put them all in place so we can see all of our pretty beads all in a row and you can see really there how quickly uh, you can create a range of different shaped beads next thing to do is to print your beads I'm using a Kaleido Compact 3D printer, so I'm using the software for that to do the slicing, but you can do that any other way if you're using a different uh, printer. I'm also going to duplicate this eight times so that I have nine copies of that bead on my print bed, and then I will go to my slicer and perform the slicing operation. That will tell me how long it's going to take and how much material I will use. Then it's to printing, and obviously here is just some step-by-steps of my printer doing the work. This also includes some beads from the next video that I'm going to show you, so do watch out for that. Once the beads are cleaned up, you can get on to the fun bit of decorating. That's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more information.